officially started as a visiting professor at St. Mary's College of California, even got the keys to prove it. And a lot of people have asked me if I'm gonna miss the lab. But the truth is, one of the reasons that I wanted to teach at a small undergrad focused college like St. Mary's is because I never want to leave the lab and I don't have to. Teaching at a place like this, you get to both teach the lecture, the lab sections of courses, as well as have your own little like lab going on. Where, but the focus is going to be on using research as a tool to help undergraduates learn, in addition to finding cool stuff. So in a place like this, the scale of the research is going to be a lot smaller and the pace is going to be a lot slower than at some sort of research intensive institution, some place like UCSF where I was before, um, some sort of bigger school. Because the focus is going to be on teaching and using have like undergrads being leading the research and having uh, being able to learn the skills and take the initiative, develop their own independence. And when you're learning things for the first time, things are going to go slow. And at a place like this, that's okay. That's expected. That's what's supposed to be. You get you get the flexibility, um, the less pressure in terms of having these deadlines for grants and all of these things. And the students get the best experience because they get to focus on they get to actually have this hands-on experience. They get to be leading things instead of just like washing dishes or something like that. So I think that a place like this, a small college, is not only a great place um, to like teach and stuff because you get to teach and you get to teach them both in the lecture and in the lab, hands-on in the lab, next to them in the lab, but you also, it's a great place to learn as a student. And so I really recommend that people um, consider a small liberal arts school or a small, um, some sort of other PUI, so primarily undergraduate institution, if they want to go into research. So a lot of people think, oh, I need to go to one of those like high-end research intensive schools where they got all that fancy equipment. But the truth is, as an undergraduate, they're probably not gonna let you anywhere near that fancy equipment. And even if you do, basically this fancy equipment like this, then if you go someplace else where they don't have that equipment, well, now you have all these skills that you can't apply. And so at a place like this, the equipment, yes, it's not going to be as fancy, but there's still so many different experiments you can do, so many things you can do by focusing on those fundamental experiments. You can do molecular cloning, you can do expression, you can do purification, you can do all of these different experiments. And you can ask and answer all of these cool questions even without having that fancy dancy equipment. And you can do things without kits. You can do things, and even when you do things without kits, you learn a lot more anyway. And so coming from a background, I actually study here at St. Mary's, I learned how to do things more cheaply and more efficient, uh, um, cost effectively. And this was really, really helpful, even though I went off and I worked at places where we had all that fancy dancy equipment and we had those um, kits that make things easier, I was still able to know how to do it without the kit, as well as have a better appreciation for everything that's going on in these reactions where things are often hidden behind black in black boxes. Because I've known that I wanted to go and teach at St. Mary's or someplace like it, but really St. Mary's, um, I've always want, been like focused on trying to keep those fundamentals at heart and learn how to do things the cheaper way. Um, learn how to do things the easier way. Don't focus on like learning fancy dancy equipment technique, so I never had that much interest in actually learning how to do cryo-EM, um, relying more on like collaborations and what, like learning the theory and stuff, but I knew that I wouldn't have access to a cryo-EM machine down the hall at a place like this. But I do have access to a PCR machine, I have access to incubators, I have access to an autoclave, I have access to all of these things where I can do all these cool experiments, and by focusing on those sorts of experiments that you can do, you're able to kind of build up your repertoire of all of these different questions questions and techniques that you um, that you can use to answer those questions. So you really get to be creative um, and come up with ways to do things using what you have. And especially as I'm trying to come up with the experiments, both for my own um, research as well as for my courses, because I'm going to be teaching like the lab sections of courses. And because of the small course sizes and things like this, I'm going to be able to incorporate the lab into the lecture and the lecture into the lab and all of this stuff and really develop what experiments I want um, to be incorporated into the lab. And when I'm doing all this and I'm thinking about, okay, well, how can I do things as cost effectively as possible? And so I'm coming up with some cool experiments and things like this that I'm really excited about. And hopefully I'll be able to share some tips with you all um, about how you can do experiments more 
more cheaply, things that you can reuse multiple times, um, even though they say single use, things that you can keep in the freezer longer than they say you can, um, that sort of thing. Just, and I think that it'll really help me better reach a lot of people who don't have access to that fancy equipment as well. Because that's one of the big barriers of science. It's not just having the education, it's having the access to resources that you need. And the truth is that for a lot of biochemistry, you don't need that fancy, fancy equipment. It's great that people have it and that they can do all these cool, big, fancy experiments, but there's also really great basic science and things like this that you can do with less. And so keep, um, so be on the lookout for more with less um, types of videos in the future, as well as a focus on really learning what's going on in the techniques, which is something that I've always done. But I think that having to do them, um, having to really think through what you're doing with what is going to make the students learn better as well. And I know that it was really helpful for me when I was, when I was an undergrad here. And so, yeah, so I'm really excited and I'm going to be hands on in the lab. I get to show these students how to do all those lab skills. I'm going to hopefully get them to love the lab like I love the lab. Um, all those gels, all those things like this. And especially at that beginning phase when everything is so exciting. And so that first SDS page, that first agarose gel, so exciting seeing those bands. And then you get, when you go and you um, do more and more research and then you get kind of jaded and it's not as exciting anymore. But here, if you can get them, keep them that excited, um, that's my goal, and to really get them excited about science. And so they don't have to go off and be biochemists if they don't want to, but hopefully they'll have a better appreciation for biochemistry, as well as um, hopefully they'll love the lab. And I love the lab, which is why I never want to leave the lab, and why I don't want to be a professor at like a research intensive institution where I'd have to be my time would be spent mostly with like grant writing and meetings and like steering the ship and so um helping design the experiments um from the bigger picture level and steer the ship and all um uh, mentor all these people in your lab i'm really interested but not really have time to actually be in the lab i'm really excited that i'm going to actually be in the lab and so there's not going to be like staff scientists and there's not going to be postdocs and there's not going to be um, grad students and all these things so i'm going to really be the one that's getting to mentor these students one-on-one -on -one in the lab side by side and i'm just so excited 